the good and the bad of investing in single family properties. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can hit the record button early. But uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fast and Money Play. This is Kirby. That's Alex. Today we just talking about the good, the bad, ugly of uh, uh, investing in single family rental properties. Uh, with all that being said, Alex, I mean, you, like I, have a single family rental property. Um, so tell me one thing, one thing that you like that's good about investing in rental property. You know, in single, I mean, single family rental property. Um, I mean, because arguably, I would say multifamily is better. Um, but I think the 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 easy approach with single family is it's maybe more affordable in a sense. It's not uh, depending on where you're buying, of course. But uh, at least in Florida, duplexes and triplexes tend to go for more than just a single family. Um, so maybe it's an easier access to get your foot in the door. Um, if you are going to manage the property yourself and not use property management. You can get that experience that's uh, very helpful. Um, I have already had some experience with it. I uh, have actually already had two repairs now. So I told you about one. I already got another. Mm -hmm. the, the dryer wasn't heating. So I had to call the... Uh, you get the heat element? Huh? Yeah, well, I called, the, uh, element? I called the same guy I bought it from. Um which I mentioned about them in a previous video, but they kind of have like a small family business where they buy appliances, resell them. Um, right. And uh, he actually came out, did it for cheap, repaired it for 60 bucks. Um, I know anywhere else would have charged 150 to 250 to repair it. So um, I also asked the guy, I said, hey, if I have any further appliance issues, not even just from the ones I bought from him, but in general, can you come out and fix them? He said, yeah, add me as a contact. So got to build that relation uh, relationship, which is going to be useful right. for, you know, any other appliance issues. But right. um, arguably, though, uh, multifam multifamily would be better in the sense that you bring in more income from more units rather than just one unit. And uh, vacancy is not as uh, detrimental as with the single family. But... That's my view on it. Yeah. Um. Just one takeaway. One takeaway that I like about single family um, versus multifamily. When you invest in a single family or when you rent a single family unit to a tenant, I believe they take more pride in ownership than in multifamilies. When you, when you know they're in. You know, fourplexes, duplexes, um, uh, you know, apartment complex and stuff. It's just like it feels like a sign of temporary. You know what I mean? But when you, you know, you have a single family home, they take more pride in it. And they're usually tenants in a single family home are in the property for longer durations than multifamily home. But so case in point, uh, the, the first properties that I bought. The first property I bought was single family. And from the time that I bought them till now, the same tenants in both of them are still there. They have more pride in ownership of, you know, it feels more like ownership to them. Even though they're renting, it feels like more ownership. It feels more like this is my home. Instead of, you know, apartment complex, you know, random neighbors and stuff would be around there. And that's that's uh, one element that I like about it, that the tenants usually stay longer in single family homes than multifamily i would agree with that because um the tenant that i have uh he actually treats it like his home um right sometimes it's almost like i forget i'm the owner and it because of how he's treating right. it. um yeah. even like when i uh when i have ray go by do maintenance and stuff um i'll ask him like hey how does it look on the inside because i haven't been inside since you know and um right. He's like, no, it looks clean. Like they take really good care of it. Um, so I'm uh, glad to hear it. And uh, you know, taking care of the outside, he reports things early. Um, which I'm glad, like you said, that was an important thing for a tenant to do. Uh, report an issue as soon as possible, rather than let it get worse. Like with the uh, when the pipe for the septic tank, uh got damaged 
um, or when the light came on, he sent me a picture and uh, I was able to get them out there the same day, fix it. Um, and, you know, uh, what a uh, 600, what well, came out to be actually about $900 in total for the pump and the replacing the pipe. But if that wouldn't have been fixed, everything would have backed up into the property right. inside the home and caused how much more in damage, you know? So, you know what? That's crazy that you say that is because I, I believe I talked to you last week or so. I had that uh, issue with one of my properties that once family, nobody's paying attention and uh, the septic backed up and it didn't it didn't go to the extreme where it caused damage other places, but the septic did back up. So we uh, had to deal with that one. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, all right, we talked about the good thing that we like about single families. You know, you had yours and I had mine. Now, what are the, what is the one thing that you hate about single families? Managing it myself. <laughs> I guess I, <laughs> I would say that. I mean, it's it's great for having the experience so I can uh, learn. Um, it's definitely needed. Um, but it definitely sucks. Uh, like, I, I would... I mean, and I'm limited to my experience, but I would assume property management has more relationships, has more contacts, can know who to call and stuff. So like when the tenant reaches out to me and says, hey, there's a problem, I'm like, oh, crap, like, OK, I, I got to find somebody that can do this. Now, luckily, with like the appliance issue, I just went to the person that I bought it from. But the septic tank issue actually was like calling a couple of numbers, trying to find the better rate, um, looking at reviews. So it was like I wasn't too familiar with uh you know, who to call in that situation. But I mean, that's just a learning experience, um, but it's more active than passive um, in that sense. Um, other than that, no, I, I think um, I haven't, haven't yet had the point where it's vacant. So I can't say, oh, I hate the vacancy part or um, I would like for there to be more than one income, which is why I'm, I would want to, I want to buy uh, my next property is a multifamily, um, but I think I'm still limited in my experience to say I hate more things about it. So right now, just uh, having to manage it is, you know, tedious. Yeah, and the thing that, I mean, that comes with time. I mean, I'll be honest with you, it's come with time of, you know, it's, yeah, do it suck. I mean, do it suck. You go looking for different people. But once you find them, you always got them in your Rolodex now. And then, so if, you know, you move to property, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, and stuff like that, you can, and it's in your local area, you already got your point of contact. So you're already building your connection outline uh, right there. But, uh, and that's, that's just part of it. I mean, it sucks initially. I mean, but uh, a shortcut, a shortcut to that is, find a general contractor. Usually if you find one general contractor, they'll tell you the best guys that they know in all the areas of a home. So you find a general contractor in your area that's good, reputable, and then you build a relationship with him and then you call him and be like, hey, who is your, that's, cause that's what I do. Who's your guy for yeah. appliances? Who's your guy for this? Because understand the GC is running a business and they're always going to find the one that's most cost effective for their business. So who is your contact for appliances? Who is your contact for plumbing? Who is your kind? Because they're usually always using using the people that's the best at the least price. So build that relationship with the contractor in your area. And then that's what you do. Just reach out to a GC, you know, start talking to them. You know, your cheap self might have to buy them two cups of coffee instead of one. <laughs> you know, go sit there and have lunch with them or something like that. And just let them know, you know, have the conversation. Let them know what you're trying to do. And he can help you out in some ways. And then, you know, when I have projects, hey, you're my first point of contact, you know, and then you start building that relationship like that. And then, you know, and as it go on and move forth, and then maybe he being a general contractor, hey, I see this property. You may need, they're trying to sell it, may, you know, we you know with a five, ten, twenty thousand dollars of work, you know, we can get this up and then you can rent it. You know what I mean? So that's building relationships like that. I think, I think that'll help. Uh, but for me, the one thing that I that I don't like about single families, and I'm be 100% transparent on single families, single families, every single family property that I buy, 
I pay it in cash because this is my biggest fear. My biggest fear, I mean, from the genesis of it, from the genesis of it, it's always been my biggest fear is I never want to pay the mortgage out of my personal money for a property. So what I mean by that is I'm not, you know, so I always pay for it cash. But it's that element of, you know, the tenant moves out and then it's only one source of income. Like we say, single family versus multifamily. It's that single source of income. And once that tenant moves out, from the time the tenant moves out to the turn to get the property ready to move the next tenant in, no matter how long it takes, you have the carrying costs. So me, how I decided to mitigate risk was just pay the house off on a single family. And then I will have the tenant, you know, if the tenant moves out, okay, so what? And then I have all the time in the world, not saying that I'm going to take all the time in the world, but I don't have to worry about that monthly cost, monthly cost, monthly cost, monthly cost. And that's the only thing that, you know, feared me away from single families. And I have a couple of them, but it is... I don't want to have to sit there and pay the mortgage, pay the mortgage, pay the mortgage. I mean, of course, I've de developed this philosophy when I was, this was my first, you know, when I would start looking at the whole idea of doing rental properties, you know? So I was thinking like, oh, for that, I don't want to be sitting here paying a mortgage and stuff like that. And then, of course, I bought at the right time for a few of them. But, you know, what that carrying costs, you know, if, that happens. I don't want to have to be paying for a turn, paying for the mortgage, paying for utilities if that's the case. And then so, and then if it's something long term, longer terms, i.e., like we talked about with the, the property I have down south, you know, the mold issue from the hurricane came up. That's a longer term deal. If I have a, you know, if I have a mortgage, I'm sitting there paying a the mortgage for them. I'm paying a mortgage for a property that's empty. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to have that headache. But it's just that single source of income. Uh, once it's gone, it's gone. And then you have to work to replenish that single source of income. I mean, even if it's multifamily, it's a single source of income that's gone. But you have other sources of income that can pay everything else until, you know, it's done. But there's no, and once in a single family, once the tenant is gone, there's no income that's coming in until that tenant, it's another tenant is back in. Yeah. I, I and I can definitely uh, see that point and that's why I say like I haven't gotten to that yet so I can't say I hate it because it's never happened to me but I I can so you don't, you don't even, I haven't had the and the crazy part is with the single families that I have like I said I bought them the tenants still live in them but just think to yourself so imagine your tenants out now you got to come up with the mortgage payment whatever the mortgage payment is you got to pay the mortgage payment without collecting the rent from the tenant. How would it feel? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can foresee hating that situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I mean. That's, yeah. I mean, like I, I mean, I've had like multifamilies, that's, but that's what I'm saying. So I, for single families, I paid for them in cash. The multifamilies, I've had tenants move out left to right in the multifamilies, but I've always had other rents to cover. What's that? The day. The day that I got to dig into my family's pocket to pay for something else. And of course, I have cushions and stuff like that. But my fear is the day I got to pay, you know, money that, you know, the family's bank account to pay for a unit. That's when I'm like, oh, God, something got to change. So so that's that's when it comes to single families. That's what, you know, likes that are don't likes. But again, Single families, they stay in it for a longer term. And another thing I want to point out, wait, do you have a, a number two? Because I got one more. You got number two no, for no, single families? No. I just got stuff to say off of what you're saying, but I don't have any more. Right, points. Well, oh, okay. on your point with the, like the general contractor, I agree with that too. Cause uh, like using Ray, um, and especially because him and his team do just about everything. So I don't even have to outsource to another person that he knows. They do tile, they do a little bit of roofing, like minor roof repairs. They do, um, you know, kitchen, like uh, cabinets, painting, everything. Like, so it's useful having them be able to do everything. And I can just stick with one, uh, one contractor. 
Yeah, and and that's that's the motor method because I mean, like you know, the single family that I have, that's I just reached out to a contractor and you know built that relationship there. Uh, the other part, the other part about the single family, I lost my train of thought on this one, but the other part about the single family that I like is you know the longevity and the actually with a single family. With the single family, you saw it during COVID. I just remember what I was about to say. You seen it during COVID, the appreciation of single family homes going up. If you don't raise the rent on a tenant in a single family home, I mean, of course you should, but if you didn't, the appreciation of the property is higher than a multifamily home. So that is the other thing that's good about a single family home. The appreciation rises at a higher clip. Like when you start talking multifamily, it's based on matrix, like how much rents received, what's the cash flow, what's the DCR, stuff like that. Single family home is single family home, cops in the area, this is what the house is worth. So the other great part about single family homes, it will appreciate faster than multifamily homes. So that's another good part about the single family landscape that will make it all shape. Yeah, yeah, that's another good point. How is it with like uh because I know some investors they own like say four townhomes on one row, right? And they're all they're but they like own like multiples of those. How is it like that? Is it the appreciation on each unit goes up because they're townhomes, or is it just like an investor's standpoint? How many uh, rents are how much in rents is being received? And well, it depends on how they're selling them. I mean, if that those four town homes usually are deeded separately. If it's like four town homes in like a twenty six row, you know they only own four of them, right? They're usually deeded separately, and um, but it just depends on how he's trying to sell them. When you try to package together, then you got to look at it as a multifamily deal. You got to look at the rents that's coming in. You got to look at the uh, DCRs. You got to look on how much the cash flow is like that. But if you sell them individually, and most people want to do it, you know, as a package deal, just to get rid of the headache instead of doing it separately. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a different animal when you, when you, but when you do it separately, you can get more money, but you just want to get rid of the headache all in general. So like in that scenario right there, it's, Maybe if you were just selling those individually, I'm just throwing out a random number. Maybe you can get two hundred thousand each for them if you sell them individually. So that's eight hundred thousand for the four. That's eight hundred thousand. But let's say you're sitting there and you're getting six hundred dollars a month in rent in each of them. So now the debt coverage ratio comes down a lot. So that's six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, twenty-four. Which you could have got eight thousand, eight hundred thousand dollars for if you sold them as single families. Now, sell it, rent it for six hundred dollars. It's maybe only worth like forty thousand, four hundred three fifty. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why single family houses appreciate more because you have comps in the area, you have different things that you can base it off the of square footage. When you go multifamily, that's 100% investors. And investors, contrary to popular belief, no matter what the real estate agent tell you, investors that's buying rental properties, they are looking at the cash flow. They're not looking at, oh, how it looks good and all this. Yeah, that's great. But the only thing that investors, the reason why they invest is they care about the numbers. If the numbers don't make sense, I don't care what it sells per square foot. I need to know that the rent that I'm receiving will cover the mortgage, will cover the insurance, will cover the taxes, will cover the property management, will recover the maintenance fee, will uh, we'll cover the vacancy rate. That's what it, it needs to cover all of those elements to make that happen. And that's the only thing they care about. All the, oh, this is a great neighborhood next to a rated schools. Investor kids are not going to the schools. They don't care. They only care about the numbers. And once real estate agents realize that, then I think they will get more deals instead of trying to sell to an investor the way that they would sell to an emotional home buyer. Well, guys, with all that being said, uh, please uh, comment down below. Hit the like button, subscribe, 
and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.